I was going to talk about my experiences when I go from company to another and where I see that uh, what happens like uh, after, you, after we all have OpenShift now in place in our companies, most likely we all do, or at least most of us. So, we all have the cool tech. It's the coolest of the cool. But uh, what happens next? So how many of here does not have OpenShift yet in the company? Okay, so we still have few. So this is a good pre-warning for you. Let's say the lesson lesson for you before you enter to that step that you you made your choice and you have implemented the OpenShift. Let's just assume that not within at this moment we all had it, and I'm talking about what happens next. So I'm not very artistic, but I try to describe this: that uh, you have the cool car. You, you saw it in a brochure, you ended up getting it, probably salesperson made it look absolutely the most fantastic thing. And, uh, and you're convinced that now you have it. But you didn't think too much that uh, what, what's the rest of the company like? That this is, we can see a field of legacy in here. So a potato field and, and you have your Ferrari there and, and obviously it's just spinning around the tires because it doesn't get anywhere. So. This would be the worst case, what happens if you have your technology and didn't prepare well. It's just a technology device which doesn't like uh, get you far. You need to do something else and uh, uh, because I'm not very artistic, I found another video which I didn't do myself. So every Finnish person probably know who is here. So you want to focus on one thing, get going fast and, and concentrate what you are doing. Let the others circle around. So now we have the technology and we are ready for the race. How do we get the audience next to the track? How do we get the other cars on play and so on? So other applications on our great track and uh, great formula race, we are ahead of us. Um, so again, <laughs> who doesn't like this? So, so this is my... <laughs> so, uh, so, so we we don't want to drop, be that person. <laughs> it, it's age, actually. Okay. So, so um, at this point, if if you have this new technology and 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 you tell people that hey, we have this open shift now in place, let's be productive. Everybody go there and be productive. You're kind of throwing the other persons like that into the deep end of the pool. And, uh, and that does not work. It just does not work. Everybody has your, you have your daily schedule, you have probably your calendar booked with meetings or you have some deadline in your project, you need to implement something. And, and people are working often like this, that you don't have really time to learn new stuff just, just for the fun of it, that somebody told you that there is a new cool toy. So. Uh, what we want to do, first I would recommend that once you have this uh, new cool technology in your house, the most important thing is that there is some ownership for that stuff. So somebody needs to feel like I own this new platform. You are like a product owner in that sense that somebody has this new platform. What do I do that I get it sold within my company? Otherwise you end up just uh, crunching CPU cycles for idling if you don't get things forward and and who who knows this movie <laughs> so so I I'm, I'm just asking about people's age here so so uh so there is the guy he is like a owner he's having the ownership these guys they were in deep shit at some point and they needed somebody to take them forward from there and now this guy is having the ownership of OpenShift in your organization so that everybody gets to look cool after it's been implemented. So first thing what you need to start doing with this ownership, find a sponsor. So if you don't have somebody in your company who is having enough budget to kick things forward, uh, you don't get people's attention. People need to take time to familiarize with the environment the OpenShift in this case, this actually applies to any new technology, but in OpenShift, you need to find the time for people to read the materials, do the trainings, and, and so forth. 
And to get that time in company, if you are having project deadline, you're not having that time unless there is somebody in the company that tells you that, okay, you get to dedicate this and this much of time for learning this new, new technology. OpenShift is, after all, rather complicated, even though it looks simple, but to adapt an application to an OpenShift, there is a little bit learning curve still. Next thing is that uh, go find the adapters. Probably in the, this room, we, we, there is no shortage of those. So you, you people are the early adapters of the technology often. Well, you are here for the open shift, and, and then there is the rest of, like, uh, 80, rest 80 percent in the company who doesn't want to hear anything about any new technology because they are busy with their current tasks. But you find this certain core group, you find a sponsor who allocates you a people that you can uh, actually start to spread this information. Then, just the practical, this is not any <laughs> fancy theory, very practical. I would just train those few people well, make sure that they know what they're doing. We have seen here stories of the POC, for example, Eero was telling one. And uh, he, he, he was, I could easily say that you were an early adapter in your company and you were doing the POC, you trained yourself well, and then you are ready to tell the other people what to do. So you need to have some core group that, uh, without advertising too much, just take a lesson or take a course from uh, Red Hat. Uh, university or whichever is your way, but put, invest some time to uh, teach those few people so they are well prepared. Then the COP. Actually, I don't mind that you, Jeremy, went over your time because you actually helped me here. So community of practice. So Jeremy was pointing out to our community of practice. Community of practice is kind of like this room here now. We are all here a community and we come together around to uh, learn, and learn new stuff and share ideas and experiences. So form some kind of community of practice in your company. Something, let's go more a little bit on the next slide, what could be in there, but it, it's basically sharing information, coming together and sharing information. And have open culture that probably all here are somewhat open to open source. So. So you, we are sharing our information. You need to do this within your, your own company, that find a way, instead of being in the silo, something that you can share information from organization to another, having your, it could be something, your Confluence or Wiki or something, where you start to collect experiences, examples and, su and such, and have this kind of meetings within your company, where you can actually, like, few hours a month, for example, share information. And then start mixing and matching people. So like, uh, like it was told here earlier that uh, I think Eero also mentioned this, that, that he goes to different teams to, to, uh, to educate the others as well, show the ex lead by example, let's say so. Or like Antti was saying that they have DevOps teams, so that would be kind of core probably in their company to start sharing that information across the house. But the main thing is that you need to have, like, drop somebody in the existing team so he can spread and influence that team, not just provide guides, some personal touch. And then this uh, term, celebrate success, that would be probably one part of the COP. You have a community of practice, let's say that you have this monthly open shift meeting in your house. And, uh, provide good examples that, okay, this was a uh, very successful project. Here is what we did something very well. It helped us here and there. So, so you kind of get this good vibe going on that, okay, this, this bunch of people are doing like a really cool stuff and they are succeeding with it. And uh, sharing info how the others could be cool people too and succeed in their project. What do you like? <laughs> Guess who <laughs> was throwing this also? So basically this community of practice would be that this is your team or silo and you occasionally look out of that box. And uh, what could be this uh, other cool stuff out there? In the community of practice, I, I would start this within your company. So have regular events with the, your sponsor. You can, you can form a group and ask how many hours could we spend a month, for example, having some kind of information sharing training session. Event like this, put it in three hours, two hours. Anybody can take the two hours a month. Then there could be 
what could happen in there. Uh, you could have this uh, success celebration, you saw some something which succeed, or you saw some horrible way of not to do anything because uh, you found a very bad way and want to others to avoid that. Then uh, this collaboration and contribution, I guess this is kind of dumb, but I mean everybody has some kind of chat, but it doesn't necessarily always work in the traditional company chat or what you have, some email list or something, doesn't necessarily work, but uh, if you can set up a confluence, some kind of wiki or some kind of discussion area where you can drop your things and ask for in, uh, guidance from the others outside of your own silo. So it could be some simple question that, how do I do this with OpenShift? Do we have examples of CI, CD with OpenShift? And you drop the question in the, in the forums or in a chat, hopefully to forums, so the next one can find it also. Doc and code share. Utilize the GitHub, even though you cannot push your company information there, you can always drop an example code in there, which doesn't like reveal any of your company secrets. Uh, make it easily accessible. Again, keep it short, so you don't have to like excuse yourself for a day per week or something like that. It would never work. And uh, and give the others opportunity to shine also. So you as this uh, kind of messenger in the company that you don't need to be the one always presenting. Let the others others present their own successes and cool stories. And here here we have I put up some list of these. I just added the ones that Jeremy also had there. So there is so you have the link. I can drop this uh, slide somewhere. So this is the link what Jeremy had there, and 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 the uncontained ones. I forgot those. Then uh, of course, first one is the training classes. That's where you find the open sheet for for admins and developers as well. Then I really recommend this job, uh, this uh, to look what Diane and the bunch have done. That that's the way how I started with open sheet. Okay, I, I came to work at Red Hat because I, I saw that OpenShift is coming and it was interesting. First thing when I started to get spend my days with OpenShift, I actually went there and watched all the videos that were available. Oh, there. Yeah. Yes, I did. Oh. <laughs> and and all the actually excellent work what uh, Ver Mukande, I don't know how to say his name, but he had these uh, demo videos, a lot of them. At no, not Grant Shipley, but Mukande, Ver Mukande. Or yeah, okay, that, that's that's the way you pronounce it. Yeah, there are really simple stuff that could be something for your community of practice. How do I set up a CI/CD pipeline? How do I set up uh, whatever route in OpenShift, for example? Very short, few minute videos showing all the different parts. And uh, then the examples, most of those videos, what you find there, you will find the uh, matching code from the OpenShift org. Uh, from the GitHub, so you can actually, what I would do, you typically cannot necessarily run those within your company as such, but take one of those as a template, modify it to your company, take one simple software from your company, modify that demo, and start sharing that within your company, by whatever forum you have set up at that point, communities of practice. This is really easy to start get going with really productive stuff. So so that we bring the barrier very low for people to enter your new system. That's pretty much it. I was hurrying through because I thought I have only 15 minutes, but I managed to do it quicker anyway. So uh, that's my stuff. Start sharing within your company. Form communities of practices. Do your own training material. Don't start from scratch. There is plenty out there for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ilka. Maybe we have time for one question before we go for coffee break. Anyone? Everybody needs caffeine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, we can help with any of those. I'd just to mention that, that when you start the community of practice and if we already have uh, some kind of relationship, for example, I can come and help you start with the first communities of practice and such, if you need. So, Jeremy? 
What was the uh, the worst Kimi Raikkonen moment that one of your customers has had? So what's been the biggest car, car crash? Just anonymized or that you've heard of? Just curious, like in that potato field of yours. What could it have been? I don't know. It's it's all the sudden and what can I say, what can I not say? Um, I think it's just overall the fact that people underestimate how big barrier it is to adapt to new stuff. So, so just kind of thinking that in your head this is the next best thing to, it used to be sliced bread, I don't know what it's nowadays, but anyway, that this is something really, really cool. And then you are a bit blind that you don't see that the others don't see the benefit, they don't know how to get started and so on, maybe in general like that. Sorry, I don't have any juicy story. Production outages, I don't want to talk about those. We are selling commercial stuff. 